Yeah. I, so I, can, I can kidnap you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like you see all these castles, and they're in. I mean, of course, it's in this. It's in a position to be defended, and it would be yeah. really difficult to kind of attack it. But you got to imagine, man, it must have sucked to try to build this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all these stones that they're going to drag up here. Exactly. Uh, How is the best in food so far? So far, it's been great. Burek. Burek was good. <laughs> and you learned one thing, there is no burek with cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is no burek with cheese. All right, so this will be recording. Yep. Okay, yeah, so this is going to be my first taste of uh, Bosnian coffee. Bosnian coffee, actually. Hot? Yeah, it's a little hot. <laughs> 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 Prijatelj prijatelja koji poznaje čovjeka odlučio je jednoga dana da napusti posao profesora geografije i da krene put po Europi. Njegovo ime je Jeff Sanders i dolazi iz Austina, Texas, a upravo nabrojane veze su ga dovele i do našeg srebrenika. Nakon što su ga upoznali, ekipa poznanika nas je kontaktirala da ga i mi trebamo poznati i da napravimo jednu priču sa čovjekom čiji su korijeni kao i kod mnogih drugih Amerikanaca upravo evropski. A u njegovom slučaju su slavensko, irsko, škotski, što je bilo i više nego dovoljno da se on zbog toga odluči posjetiti stari kontinent i mjesta njegovih predaka. Dakle, u uvodu ste vidjeli da ćemo se u ovoj priči maksimalno potruti da ga što više približimo Bosni i Hercegovini kroz istoriju, ali i kroz želdac, pa kojemu bolje sjedne. A za početak, otišli smo da ga ukrademo iz našeg srebreničkog Harley bara. Da se može reći, na engleskom i na ruskom, jel? Pa u dojči kaš, a u dojči kaš, jel? A, guten tag, jel? Ja, ja, vi gets? Es gets, es gets. Evo se ovdje imamo goste iz raznih zemalja. Jest, jest, imamo i prijatelje, da? Imamo i prijatelje iz Švicarske, kako sam razumio. Švicarske. Ali, ja sam ovdje zbog Amerikanca. Amerikanac? Jesu. Kako si? Kako si? Ah, uh, real American. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm Shadi. Nice to meet you, Shadi. Ciao. I'm from the television Tata Brada TV. Mm -hmm. It means it means like a father with a beard, you know. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Beard father. <laughs> And you are? Uh, I'm Joff. 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 Yeah, from Austin, Texas. From Austin, Texas. Man, that's far away. Mm -hmm. How many miles in thousands? That is. <laughs> I don't know, more than six or seven, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't tell you on, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I can tell you it's, it's seven time zones behind, so it's like seven hours behind. Seven hours behind, yeah, so, so it's morning there. Uh, yeah, would, right yeah. now it would be early in the morning. Uh, right, early now in the morning, yeah. Here we go. How are you American? 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 Pa smijem ja oteti tvog Amerikanca? Naravno, naravno. On je raspoložen za druženje. I can kidnap him. Yes. So? Okay. Okay. I have something in store. We will visit few places. Great. And mostly to have you experience our town, our history. Because we are in Europe. And Europe, we know, it's older than America. <laughs> what do you think Jack? um there are more uh, it's it's that's debatable i mean humans have existed in europe longer than in in the americas and thank you uh, <laughs> let's agree to disagree yeah? okay, okay okay anyway do you have any roots in europe oh absolutely yeah Origin? yeah i mean like uh I mean, how much time do you have? Uh, so, a lot. Um, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I am um, <clears throat> a quarter Russian, part just a mix of the British Isles and Scandinavia, 
the Irish, I'm sorry, the Scotch Irish side we can trace back almost a thousand years, and then the Russian side we can go back at least 600 years accurately in the family history. So you have a Slavic blood in you? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, That's yeah. one thing in common. I told you, yeah. we'll find everyone's origin here. Anyway, let's go to our first stop. Sounds good. One of the things that I did on this trip was go to uh, places where I have like family roots and connections. Like uh, there's these two small towns. Actually, I was, you know, last night we were talking with some guys and they were like, well, why did you go to Dresden? And I forgot to mention that just outside of Dresden um, are some small towns where like my great, great, great grandparents used to live. And I mean, it's interesting because like, or I think it's interesting. Um, so they were like craftspeople that built wagons, right? And that was right. like their job. And even their last name, Leuschner, comes from this part of a wagon that they were built. And we have like family records of like the the guilds that they were part of and like the workshops where they worked at. And in the late 1800s, you have like cars becoming a thing, like Daimler-Benz. And so their business was destroyed by automobiles. So then right. that's right. why they came to the U.S. because he, you know, his their business in Germany of this wagon kind of construction came to the stop. Uh, yeah, it was it was ended because uh, you know. So I, uh, and uh, your last name is Sanford. Stan San Sanford. Oh, so that's Sanford. that's my father's side, which is the the English part, oh, right. British part. Sanford. But Leuschner was uh, my mom's mother's side. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I went to these towns and I went to like the workshop where it was and it's 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 still there but it's it looks like it's an abandoned building you know like it's it's but it was interesting to go and see places where my ancestors were and that's something that's been I guess part of my identity I mean it's it's why I studied Russian and and Eastern European studies in college is because I had this family connection to Russia and um, Yeah, so I mean, I, I've always been fascinated by my, my family history and, and learning about it. And that's what got me interested in studying history and social studies and why I got into teaching, I guess, is because I, I, I love it and, and I'm passionate about it. And I think the students pick up on that, you know. So. Nice. Jeff, we are near our first goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But first, let me introduce you to the real Srebrenik. Okay. Yeah. You came to town, it's quite young town, Okay. established like some 60 years ago. All right. And it came to be because of the railroad that passed through it and the main road that connects now nowadays Europe with mm -hmm. Bosnia. And we took the name of this village. All right. This is Srebrenik now called Upper Srebrenik. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And also this village took name from the old town that we are going to visit now. Real old time. Old town, sorry. We called, we have the name for it locally, Gradina. Mm -hmm. If you can make superlative from a town, it will be like a town big town okay yeah grad gradina yeah grad is like uh city like, like, like yeah yeah a city. City or town. yeah this is the old town that we are leading you to and for you to learn something about us and this place and our history you will be surprised i think good let's go that's great uh, before we arrive there what's the oldest structure or building in your place like in texas or yeah, the us no, in general it doesn't matter where you live now or like um, your birthplace technically okay so i say i'm from texas but that's i was technically born in los angeles right um but if we go with texas probably one of the oldest ones is, is it's going to be one of the spanish missionary missions from maybe like 1600 or something about like that, you know, so maybe 400 years old. Um, and then if you go in the US, some of the oldest structures you have, 
like the Anasazi ruins, which are in like, I think they're in New Mexico. Um, I really can't remember when they're from. Maybe 1,000 years old or something like that. Okay, that's pretty yeah. old. Yeah. And that's the long lost forgotten civilization. Yeah, yeah. That's the remain of it. Right. Yeah. So, the place we are leading you to is almost 700 years old. Wow. And it's not from long lost forgotten civilization, because it's the place <coughs> that's, by the books, officially mentioned like a, a first place of creating Bosnia. Okay, like, so like the founding of Bosnia. Uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. From those first kings and leaders and rulers that were here, that were based. So this is literally one of the king's castle. Okay. Yeah, from Bosnia. And when you... I was thinking, when you arrived here, let's bring him to the place of Arbert. Sounds great, man. And this is it, the old town Gradina. Yes, nice. Old town Srebrenica. You see all these castles, and they're in. I mean, of course, it's in this. It's in a position to be defended, and it would be really difficult to kind of attack it. But you got to imagine, man, it must have sucked to try to build this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all these stones that they're going to drag up here. Exactly. Oh. Uh, exactly. And hard. one, also, fun fact: no one knows where this stone came. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. There is no place of origin. There is no place where it was mined. No, oh, it's got to be from somewhere. <laughs> it got, it got to be. It's not, it's not from the sky, definitely. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, one mystery that still, I don't know, those scientists can't answer. Because and also the stone is, as you can see, still there, not decaying, mm -hmm. not uh, breaking, in a, like most we have it's instruction we have old towns in bosnia like this one we have those but they are just like old broken tooth mm -hmm. so it's just still intact yeah yeah just like that yeah it is really well preserved there used to be a roof on almost every tower of course yeah uh high pointy mm -hmm. and that that decayed it was wooden yeah, yeah. it yeah. was wooden roof wooden bricks, wooden stuff uh, that, that made them, that decayed, but the stone remained. Mm -hmm. And there is a story of, it, of its origin. Uh, the story goes like we had three queens or three princes mm -hmm. that were, I don't know, competitive, who will build better castle course yeah yeah <laughs> and so the the story goes like that there is one in Doboy the uh, second one around I think the still present old town in Gradachac there is a newer Ottoman made tower white tower and ours and 
one of the well preserved and best one is this one and we never gave up easily mm -hmm. and that was the story here with Ottomans they came they conquered they fight and this was like one I don't know keep like outlook and they came in great numbers they surrounded it they besieged it and kept it under the siege mm -hmm. and what have they done they took the their horses and they turned around those horse shoe on each leg of their horses and they marched on snow with them from the castle during the night and the Ottomans thought that they got the backup ah. <laughs> and they were still trying to get them out like days or don't, I don't know what time after they left mm -hmm. they still thought they are inside while it was empty but they actually escaped and they okay. escaped okay. <laughs> alive and well and the Ottomans had troubles to conquer the empty castle <laughs> That's one of the great military strategic story here that's that's been told over the generations. However, that's it. The old town, Srebrenik, made in 1333. Okay. And the most famous is a signature from that period when the ruler of this castle made agreement with Dubrovnik. Mm -hmm. And from back, from that time, rulers from Dubrovnik, Dalmash, Dalmatia. And in that agreement, he made agreement in the name of Bosnia. Cool. Yeah. What was the agreement? That was like a like an like, alliance uh, or a peace yeah, treaty? Yeah, and uh, like uh, like trade. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Trading agreement, not to be, you know, how how it was back then. We will not touch your caravans with food and ah, okay, supplies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. will not touch ours. We will exchange goods. So it's like non yeah. non-aggression in trade. Yeah, exactly. Well, in nine years, it's going to be seven hundred years old. Wow. You want to try go inside? Yeah, if we can, I'd love to go inside. I think we can if it's possible. Okay, let's try. Yeah, it's usually un unlocked. There's a keeper. Uh, it's touristic attraction here, and they are keeping it clean, they are doing maintenance. Mm -hmm. The bridge, this bridge is not the original one, this is maybe, it could be fifth or sixth for its lifetime. All right. That is rebuilt. So they do have some small fee at the entrance, really small, like, I don't know, one euro. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad, exactly. But there is a view from the other side, that's breathtaking. You are accustomed to the sign of a deer running out to the, on the road. Of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's tons you were surprised by the sign of wolf. Yeah. And bear. And, <laughs> and bear. Bo and boars. <laughs> and boars. Okay. There is one sign in Bosnia that's been put here in Bosnia, like some 50 kilometers from this place. That sign is unique mm -hmm. in Europe. It's a sign of bats on the road. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> in in town of Varesh, yeah. in town of Varesh, they have this this road tunnel. That's natural cave. Okay. Yeah, it's natural cave. They use that cave because it has entrance and exit and entrance. They use it to build the road, mm -hmm. and they put the sign. Of, of bats on road <laughs> unique sign in Europe I don't know maybe in world <laughs> possibly yeah <laughs> it's a steam I was <laughs> anecdote this is a, I, I want to tell you this is the jail the mm -hmm. legend say this is the jail for the soldiers or something I don't know mm -hmm. they don't have doors there they don't have doors right? oh so you just get dropped in and I then I don't know how they do that but <laughs> They don't have any most entrance. likely ropes yes. yeah, yeah probably probably yeah. Uh, or, or maybe they lower a ladder and yeah uh, it's, it's like a uh, uh, sounds of the lambs <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Only we yeah, don't have yeah. Hannibal Hector here. <laughs> <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot skate, man. There yeah. is no skate. Yeah. The yeah. legends say, I don't know, that probably he was jail. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely. For, Most likely. For the bad people. Because it's common for this area when you order chelak, you have they are separated like in five, seven, or ten. Okay. Yeah, that's the number of the meat pieces inside the meat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> also, how hungry are you? If you are very hungry, ten is take ten. Yeah, yeah. take ten. Take ten. Take ten. Also, <laughs> what, what will I suggest to you is. Yogurt. 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 You yes. need to have that with cheddar. It's a milk? Yeah. It, it's a cream. Milk cream. Yeah. Milk oh. cream, yeah. Yeah. Like you drink it or? Yes, yep. of course. Okay. Yes. yes. Alright. And it goes... It's like a... I don't know. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a match made, made in heaven. A match made in heaven. Exactly. Just... I... I uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's hard to remember every, every phrase, every... Yeah. You know. Yeah. English is full of idioms. <laughs> so many, yeah. <laughs> so many, yeah. But anyway, match made in heaven, I promise you. Alright. Yeah. Alright, so this will be recording? Yep. Okay, yeah, so this is going to be my first taste of uh, Bosnian coffee. Bosnian coffee, yeah. actually, in any of the Balkan countries. So. Yeah. And, and I, I should warn you that I'm not, I mean, I enjoy the taste of coffee, <laughs> but I'm not a regular coffee drinker. Um, okay. So uh, I'm not like a, a connoisseur, an aficionado. I just. It's, it's, okay, okay. So. But uh, I, I can uh, point that like a tea for British, mm -hmm. that's a coffee for Boston. Yeah. 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 It's a daily. A must. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're not Bosnian if you don't drink coffee. <laughs> yeah. Hot? Yeah, it's a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hot. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need, I need to mix the sugar. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's good. it is good. It is so hot. It reminded you of your ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> so you can drop a tear and still be a man. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> That's the excuse <laughs> when you burn your tongue. <laughs> so when you drop a tear, you said, Oh, I, I just remember my late grandfather. Of course. <laughs> mm. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. 
just to shorten the time while we wait, mm -hmm. I would love to find more about you. Okay. Yeah. You work as a teacher. Well, I was, yeah, I've, but yes, I, that, that's what and I've done. Your main course is geography? Yeah, that's what I taught, okay. old geography. Yeah. So. And how you start this idea of yours, your trip? How, how it came to be? Um, <laughs> it's honestly, <laughs> maybe not the best, but I mean, I, I, there are a lot of problems with the school system in the United States. And I, I, I just kind of got to the point where where I was at, I just couldn't take anymore. So I quit my job, and then I thought, well, what am I going to do now? And I was like, I'm going to go travel. And, and two things, enjoy myself, but then also like record and document where I'm going, what I'm seeing. Some of the places that I wanted to go are, are you know, of historical significance. Uh, meet up with friends and relatives and that type of thing so it's 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 partially just me trying to cope with like very difficult decision which was leaving that job because i love my students incredibly you know they're like my family uh, but it was just a situation where i i couldn't do it anymore you know it's like the job is literally killing me um literally. yeah because of all those happenings in america uh no uh, i mean to put it really simple and straight it's it's, it's just the way the job is structured um uh, the demands that it requires and 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 the straw that broke the camel's back like the kind of like the last thing was was just like administration just so bu bureaucracy uh and and that and and just the school wasn't functioning the way it should have, you know. And, and as a teacher, we don't get the proper support that we're supposed to get. You know, it's an, it's an extremely important, extremely difficult job. And you know, we're only human beings. We can't do everything. And um, if we don't get the basic amount of support that we are supposed to get, then you can't carry on. You know. And then one day, you decided to go just like that. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, it was a really almost, yeah, impulsive, like, or I was like, okay, I can't do this job anymore. What am I going to do? You know what? Let me go travel, you know, do what I, what I love to do, which I, I've traveled a lot before. And as I was going through it and thinking about, you know, where did I go on my last big Europe trip? Where are the places that I didn't go? Um, and I just kind of developed from there and um, a lot of it was actually I, I should back up um, so I started in Munich because I am I had a training there so I was already going to be going to Munich and uh, yeah actually I need to kind of back up I forgot about this <laughs> so I have a group of students that we're going to go to Japan next summer. So this this trip has been planned and it's still happening. So I'm still going to I'm still leading them. Luckily that travel program is not tied to my school, so I can still take them next summer. But part of that tour group was I had this training in Munich and it was supposed to be like a week long, 5 days, right? So when I decided to quit the job, I was like, well, let me just go to the training in Munich and then just not come back for 2 months. <laughs> Which is what I did. So I, you know, I flew out there, and I just, I've, I've been traveling around since then. Uh, so I guess, yeah, it was, it was kind of impulsive, but it was also like expanding off that what I was already doing. And um, and so far, these last two months, mm -hmm. the best experience was where? Uh, not counting Bosnia, not counting today. Yeah, um, that's 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 hard. Um, let me think a moment because I, it, I, it's, it's been a lot in two months. Um, Let you process it. Yeah. <laughs> it was in Germany, yeah. Yeah. It was Austria. Yeah. yeah. Austria, Austria was all right. Yeah. Uh, Hungary's next. Okay. Um, Czech Republic. I mean, I'd been there before and I love it. It was great. Um, Dresden was really cool. Um, I had a good time in Amsterdam, but that's just because my cousin was there. So, okay. you know. Um, there was some places in France, like the countryside, that I really enjoyed. Um, 
Paris was nice, but it's just it's crowded. crowded. So crowded, my God. Uh, which I knew I was expecting that. That was exactly. to be expected. Um, okay, I think Slovenia was was probably the most unexpected, amazing experience. Being able to go from the mountains to the sea. Um, that was definitely a highlight. And I think part of that was also because I had been before that been in like like city after city after city like all these cities and finally I allowed myself some time to just get out in nature you know and that going up in the mountains and just having the fresh air and being surrounded by just natural beauty was was amazing yeah yeah uh, the people were great I mean everywhere people have been great um, hospitality is at par can we say that everywhere um no <laughs> uh, any bad experience nothing too terrible but uh, I mean and I don't want to like pick on France too much but I mean I don't know something about France was was not not right yeah it, was, it, it wasn't it wasn't my taste I guess is the thing there's there's something that's not a match um, I mean, it, it was fine, but it just wasn't for me, I guess. Yeah, like I say, I like, I like the countryside. The history, of course, is, is fascinating. Of course. Um, okay, you are seven. This is five. Mm -hmm. You can see it's Check smaller. It out, Not just the number of the meat, but also the bread. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's smaller. Everything is homemade. Actually, they buy meat, but they process it. They make these chebabs. So this is not uh, something you can buy in shop or right. Yeah, also the bread and this place here is known, or rather we say unknown, for its way of making jam. They have that family recipe that is kept secret. Okay. Yeah, and I will be humble but honest. This is maybe the best place for chevs. In this part of Bosnia, okay, yeah, if not all Bosnia, but I will get in trouble because I travel a lot and uh -huh. I need to I need to stay objective. Uh -huh. I will, uh -huh. So I will have your opinion. All right, after this. So this is yogurt. We called it yogurt. Yeah, yeah, and maybe you have seen it. It's it has to be well shaken before. Okay. Yes, you must shake it. How's the food? It's great, great. Probably some of the best chapati I've ever had. And in general, how is the Bosnian food so far? So far, it's been great. Burek. Burek was good. <laughs> <laughs> and you learned one thing: there is no burek with cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there is no burek with cheese. Uh, anyway, we like to joke about that, mm -hmm. but we are how do you say serious about. <laughs> so, you're serious about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> to remember that. No, so that we can joke, but you can't eat burek with cheese. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Only with meat. What oh. are the grades of this meal? Oh, this meal? Uh, I would say it's 100%. I mean, uh, the only thing, uh, maybe could use some vegetables, but I think the chivapi and the bread is great. So you are like, not satisfied with only onions. <laughs> <laughs> How about some chili peppers? That would be good. That would be good. I, I mean, it's just, it's probably just the way I was raised. Mom always made sure we had to have some vegetables with the meal. Okay. So okay. Uh, I'm going to, I guess, thank mom for that. Thank mom for <laughs> that. Because, you know. As you can see, this is in some way grilled. Mm -hmm. Meat, grilled bread, with some add-ons and, as I told you yeah. before, secret sauce hospitality oh it's great it's been some of the best on the trip so far yeah some okay. very warm people thanks to elvis of course and and yourself um yeah it's been a really good experience you, know? you told us that you are planning to return you made some checkpoints for the next trip that's yes going to happen sometimes hopefully hopefully in the yeah. future if, if, if possible and um, even without us here present and those guys you met, uh, was there any, any doubt of you returning to Bosnia? Or you, or we, we changed your mind? Maybe we, we made your mind to 
No, I mean you've you've given me more reasons to want to come back because I mean I've only I feel like this trip is is so quick. I've only just gotten a brief taste, and of course it's only been at winter time. So I mean I don't I don't mind the cold, and it hasn't been that bad, honestly. Sorry, but actually, it was really cold the other day. <laughs> it was, but I mean, it, it, you, know, you can live with it. You can always put on an extra jacket. But um, to experience it in either spring or summertime or another season would be something else. Um, a lot of the places that you recommended uh, was it the Wind Cave and then the pyramids and and oldest rainforest. The rainforest, yeah, yeah, I knew there was. The oldest. The oldest rainforest in Europe. In Europe. Yep. Yeah. So there's. Plenty more to see. Um, like I say, some things that I wanted to that I missed, like Tito's Bunker. Um, um, and yeah. those those are great places. Just yeah. just to visit the town of Konigs yeah. is great experience. Just from the nature of my work, I will tell you something that you haven't missed, but you haven't fully explored, and that's the true soul of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mm-hmm people yeah because I think you just scratched the, the, the surface of course yeah because trust me uh, out of my experience you can be surprised how welcome you could be in any village any place doesn't matter doesn't matter who the hosts are are they Muslims are they Serbs are they Croats are they I don't know what are they I don't know. I think you need to explore also that idea okay. to make maybe just one day backpack travel through some village okay. without anyone. And you will be, I think you will be surprised. Okay. That's that's my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Jeff, uh, I will I will take the lead in the name of. Elvis and the rest of the crew you met at Harley Bar <laughs> and in the name of our television, Tata Brada, and I, I can say thank you for choosing Stradonik, for coming here, for spending your your time with us and for your so far, as you told us, great opinion about us. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any last words? Um, I don't know, but I think something you said about like the, the people, like just scratching the surface. I mean, like every place that I've been to, I mean, yes, the, the, the history, the landscape is beautiful, but I mean, people make something worthwhile. You know, it's like that's, that's like I said, in the one place like Amsterdam, what, what made it outstanding was being able to see my cousin after so many years, you know, so, so, um, I guess it's kind of like a thing where uh, that what that's what makes the difference between a house and a home, right? Is the people that will, what the people add to the place exactly. Yeah. So, so take care of your people. <laughs> take yeah. care of each other. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good trip. Thank you. So
I poštovani gledalci, da li je ova priča bila dobra ili je možda čak bila i bolja od očekivanog? E pa, vi nam sami to možete kazati to na razne načine, komentarima na našim društvenim mrežama, konstruktivnim kritikama, ali i onim najvažnijim i najbitnijim za sve nas. Slobodno se javite, pišite, predložite ili pozovite da napravimo priču i sa vama, vašom rodbinom, vašim prijateljima, komšijama i ostalim drugim ljudima, zato što je naš cilj uvijek da napravimo zanimljive priče drugačije ispričane. A do neke vaše priče, ostajte nam živo i zdravo i uživajte uz priče televizije Tata Brada.